If you'll open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2, we continue our study through Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. This morning we'll begin reading at verse 19. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 19. This is the word of God. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who takes a genuine interest in your welfare. For everyone looks out for his own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself, because as a son with his father he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. And I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. But I think it is necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad, and I may have less anxiety. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy, and honor men like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ risking his life to make up for the help you could not give me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There is an old saying that the devil is in the details. And anyone who's ever been any kind of management position can attest to the truth of that statement. In fact, if you study history, major military campaigns have been won or lost because of the detail. Taking care of the details. Details are important in the success of any operation, but most especially is this true when we deal with people. In this passage, Paul writes to the Philippian church and he talks about two important details who just happen to be people. You say, well, this is a nice little note that he's put in here, but is it really essential to doctrine and theology? Maybe not, but it's essential to ministry because, you see, Paul was concerned about people. And Christian ministry is always concerned with people. All our doctrine and all our theology teaches us the truth about who we are and who God is and what our relationship to him is and how we can have that relationship restored through Jesus Christ, then how we are to live because of that. It's all about people. People are important. People are our business, if you will. And involvement with people means being concerned about details. Paul is sending Epaphroditus to the Philippian church with this letter. And he soon hopes to send Timothy. And he writes to them to explain why he is doing what he's doing as he seeks to minister to them. In doing so, he demonstrates his love and concern for them. And he shows them the love that these two men have for Christ and his church as well. Details. Is it important? Yes, it's important. In today's world, one of the things they tell us is one of the greatest gifts you can give to another person is to honestly, simply listen. I remember on occasion when my mother was uh, preaching a sermon to her son that in the midst of her delivery, she would say, listen to me. Apparently she could see on my face that I had checked out 
And her message was going in one ear and out the other. And she would say, look at me, listen to me. And when mama said that and her face got red, I knew what was going to be red next if I didn't listen. You see, Paul is saying, I want you to listen to these things because they may not be huge in anybody else's life, but in your life it's important. I want you to know why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's not because I'm just willy-nilly sending Epaphroditus back and keeping Timothy and telling you one thing and doing another. No, I care about you, and you need to know why I'm doing what I'm doing. And so he focuses on these two important ministry details and in so doing, models his concern for these believers. So this morning, what I want us to do is simply take the text as it's given to us and first we see Timothy and you see that in verses 19 through 24. Paul explains why he hopes to soon send Timothy to them. Probably... And all this is is conjecture, but probably when he left Philippi, continued his ministry journey, he had told them that, Lord willing, we're going to come back and do more ministry with you. But all those plans changed. He was arrested. And now Timothy is with him, probably doing all the things he's not allowed to do since he's under house arrest, being his hands and feet and mouthpiece in other places. And Epaphroditus comes bringing the gift from Philippi. You see, the circumstances have changed and Paul wants them to understand what's going on and he explains why he hopes to soon send Timothy to them. He says, I want to send Timothy to you because he'll be a blessing. He's going to minister to you. Whether I can come or not, Timothy I hope to send soon. We think about Timothy, and he says Timothy is a model for putting Christ first, for being concerned about others. And if you listen to what Paul says here, you hear the echo of what he said earlier to them when he wrote in verses 3 and 4, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should not only look to the, your own interests, but also to the interests of others. He said, Timothy is like that. He's interested in you and your growth. What's happening with you? Timothy cares about you. You're not just the means to an end. He really does love you. Timothy is unique for two reasons that Paul lists. One, he's genuinely concerned. He truly looks out for the interests of Christ, and that means the welfare of those who follow Christ. Think of our own culture. Their culture wasn't that different. If there was a motto for our culture, it would probably be looking out for number one. We tend to take care of ourselves. That was true in that culture as well. And he says, Timothy is uniquely different because he truly does look out for the interests of others. He shows the love of Christ that way. But he's also unique because of his relationship to Paul. He has become a son to Paul. They have this father-son relationship as they minister together. And Paul says, I'm willing to send Timothy to you. And he's willing to come. And it's reminiscent of the father sending the son to save us. Paul says, what you think about Timothy is true. He's a good man. He's a godly man. And I hope to send him soon. When I see how things sort out here, I hope to send him to you so he can minister among you. He's not just sending anyone. He's sending his son in the faith. Timothy. I wonder, are we like Timothy? Are we truly concerned for the ministry of Christ? Are we truly concerned about people around us? Our brothers and sisters? You know, one of the things about being in the South, especially growing up in the South, is we're very polite. But that politeness can be a real wall 
to true relationship. Hey, how are you today? Fine, how are you? And you're dying inside, and they are too. But we're not about to say that because I just don't want to get into it. Because when you really begin to talk, that takes time and energy and effort. You have to give of yourself to listen. One of the hard things I've had to learn is I'm not a good listener. I'm a good talker, but I'm not a good listener. And I've had to learn to try to be a good listener. Yeah, I'm a typical male. You begin to tell me what's going on. I'm thinking, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Here, well, here's one thing you can do. Here's two things you can do. Here's three things you can do to fix it. It's not a sin. It's just the way God wired us. That's why men and women in relationship, in marriage, need to understand God made us different because we need those differences. So learn to capitalize on the strength of your mate. But guys, when she starts talking, don't start formulating because she don't care. She's smart enough to know how to formulate responses. She just wants you to care enough to listen. She needs to know you care enough to listen. Paul's saying, Timothy cares enough to come because he genuinely loves you because he loves Christ. Are we like that? Are we concerned about the details of somebody else's life? Or are people just the means to an end to make us feel better about ourselves? To be used to help us accomplish what we desire. Now let me give you a warning before we move on to Epaphroditus. You cannot save the world and you can't be everything to everybody. That tends to be the extreme. We either don't listen or we think we have to listen to everybody and solve everybody's issue or carry everybody's burden. You can't do it. It will kill you. Believe me. It's destroyed more than one pastor who tries to, to take care of everybody in his church. Carry everybody's burden in her church. It can't be done. Only God is big enough. He is the good shepherd. So be faithful where you are to the people God's entrusted to you. You don't have to be responsible for the whole world or even the whole town of Bisco, or even the whole Presbyterian church right here. Just the people God's put you in those relationships with and be open to new relationships, but don't carry the whole world on your shoulders because you do before long you won't be helping anybody they'll have to be helping you because you'll break down timothy genuinely cared about these people then there's epaphroditus you say man if i had a name like that i would head straight to the clerk's office and get a name change me too but we didn't live in that culture that was a good name back then verses 25 through 30 paul explains i am sending epaphroditus back because the original purpose was probably that Epaphroditus would take these gifts to Paul that would help sustain him in his time of house arrest and he would remain there and assist Paul for a time. But he got sick on the journey. It happens, doesn't it? Now, those of us who are not very good at being sick, it doesn't take much to really, uh, this week, there was, I think there's a stomach bug going around and Kay and I had a touch of it, just a touch, just a touch enough to make me grouchy. I don't like being sick, I ain't good at being sick, I don't want to be sick, and you know how you have those days when you don't feel bad enough to stay in the bed or good enough to be up doing something and then you feel guilty? Because you're not accomplishing everything you wanted to do. And every time you eat something, your stomach goes squirrely. And you go, I don't like this. I have things to do, Lord. I'm doing your work. <laughs> yeah, I think he laughs at that too. As though I need you, you know. 
here Epaphroditus has gotten very sick and the word had filtered back to Philippi that he was seriously ill, in danger of dying, and indeed he was. And Paul shares all that with them and says, I thought it best to send him back because I knew you would be anxious about him. He's one of yours. I wanted you to see that he was okay. Our plans have changed and here's why. He said, that's just a detail. Who cares? Paul cares because he cares about these people. And he wanted them to know why he was sending him back and how important it was that they receive him as someone worthy of honor because some might have been tempted to say, yeah, you send Epaphroditus and what does he do? He's in Rome a day or two and off he comes back home. That's not why he came back. He came back because Paul sent him back to comfort and minister to the church. He said God was merciful. He was very sick. He could have died, but he didn't. And I rejoice that he didn't. And I want to send him back so you can rejoice and know that all was well. Say, why is Paul taking the time to do this? Because he cares. Because he cares about these people. He cares about their concerns and their hurts and their needs. He cares about this church, not just his own comfort. You see, when you care, and people know if you do, you will touch them deeply. There used to be a saying that was around in the church and it got to be trite because it was used so much, but there's a lot of truth in it. People don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. I remember years ago, somebody said, why do you talk to the kids and build relationships with the kids and joke with the kids and all? I said, because kids matter. <laughs> I said, children matter. And I said, when I was a kid, my pastor was way up here and he was untouchable. And I saw him in the pulpit and I liked him, but I never got close to him because I was a kid. And kids were supposed to be seen and not heard and rarely seen if possible. Especially around the preacher because you might say something to embarrass your folks. Ah, some of you remember those days. But I always wanted to be close. Just to talk to the man. So I said, I want the kids to know they can always talk to me. That I'm their friend. That I'm their pastor too, not just mom and dad's pastor. You see, that's what Paul is doing here. He's saying, you matter. Yeah, I've got this ministry. I've got plans. I'm doing all this stuff and all these people involved. But you matter too. And he shows that by taking care to explain why he's doing what he's doing in ministry. Jesus said, this is how they'll know that you're my disciples. Because you love one another. Because you care. You care enough to be involved in each other's lives. And you and I know that means you get dirty because life is messy. But it's worth it, isn't it? Because there are no bonds like those bonds that are forged as you go through life together and you laugh together and you cry together and you lament together and you grouse together and you pray together. And people know who cares. They know who cares. Do people know you care? And do they know you care because Christ lives in you? You see, one of the things that really comes out loud and clear when the medical team goes to this part of the world in the summer is these people got to know they care. They're here for some reason, and we don't see them getting anything out of this. They must care. Why? Why would they care about us? Why would their church care about us? And they get to tell them, here's why we care. Here's why we care about your feet. Here's why we care about your health.
because Jesus cares. Now what about you? Before you finish lunch, you will have opportunity to show probably those in your own family that you care. Do you? Will they see that you care? Because Christ is in you. Father, thank you that you care for us. Oh, how Jesus listened to his disciples how he reached out to them, how he shared with them details of ministry. And so he does with us. And Lord, I pray that we, like Paul, would show our love for your church by caring one for another. And then that love will be seen to those outside your church. And we can show folks that the reason we care is not because we're better, but because we love Jesus, who cares and loves them too. Show us this day that you care and use us to show others that you care. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen.